So Roland, welcome here in Helsinki. Thank you, Martijn. We are going to talk about crowdfunding. I think uh, we picked the right spot over here at the church because yeah, I think churches are masters in crowdfunding uh, <laughs> for over the hundreds of years. Yeah. But there are new things happening in crowdfunding. Today you gave your talk at the Crowd Dialogue Europe uh, over here in Helsinki. Um, what is going on in, in crowdfunding land, and especially uh, on the Europe side? On the European side. Uh, th there are a lot of things happening now on a European level on, on crowdfunding. And one of them is getting more professional. So in the last five years we saw a, lot, a fast growth of the European crowdfunding industry. Uh, from a very small organization, uh, we now have a multi-billion euro industry already. So it's, it's exploding already. But uh, what you also see now is that we have a lot of professionalization there from uh, the platforms that know much more about what they're doing, from regulators, the regulators know much more about what crowdfunding is, they're working on new regulations on crowdfunding. Uh, so that's, that's a good thing because now we see that it's uh, being be become part of the whole financial ecosystem uh, in Europe. And uh, we also wrote a book about crowdfunding together, so we, are, we, uh, we already know each other in Dutch, so <laughs> for, our, for our English viewers, sorry. Uh, but then we also had a discussion about, uh, uh, about the terms crowdfunding and crowd investing. Because when you see, okay, what is growing right now is the peer-to-peer -peer lending or, or the, the crowd lending uh, and a little bit of equity, mm -hmm. uh, not so much the, the, the reward and donation-based uh, 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 fundings. And what I also see is that the connection with the crowd is getting weaker. Yeah. So people are more blindly investing in projects or as a consortium together uh, 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 and their trust, uh, the owner of the platform or, or their advisor mm -hmm. um, uh, where they should invest. Uh, so what do you think in the future, uh, 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 what's going on with the crowd part of the funding? I think there's, there will be a more distinction there. That's in, uh, indeed what you said, is that uh, we have, because the industry is being more professional, you see also a lot of different business models there. Uh, one of them is indeed marketplace lending. So is that uh, people don't have any connection uh, with, the, with the companies anymore. So the crowd is not investing in a company anymore, or uh, it's not even a crowd, there's just a group of people where there's a lot of money is being spread out to a lot of uh, projects. Uh, in the past we called it peer-to-peer -peer lending, but it's not peer-to-peer -peer anymore because on one side you don't have any individual people anymore, so it's more marketplace lending, lending and that's a fast one of the fastest growing industries and that will evolve much more that will be the new online banking uh, for, for for SMEs for that are raising money or for people that are want to have a personal loan on the other end you'll see with crowd lending crowd equity but also reward based crowdfunding that will be the, the, the good platforms and the good companies will see and notice that uh, the crowd is much more than just uh, a group of people that are giving them money. So they want to take that crowd, want to use that crowd also inside their own business and also the business model. So they can use it for uh, marketing purposes. Uh, of course, they really use the crowd for, for market research, for example. Um, and even the next step, what I talked about today about the crowd business model is that if you take that crowd really inside your company, um, why also no, uh, not give them co-ownership and let them also decide on the, the decisions made in your, in your company. Yeah, but then the, uh, you got the, the really big challenge about how, how do you manage the, the, the crowd, especially when you're a, a startup and mm -hmm. you're really internally focused, busy, busy with doing your thing, uh, building your, 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 your new versions, and then also, oh, we also got a crowd of 100 or 1,000 uh, people that, that you can use, but it's also a, uh, yeah, uh, a really uh, hard thing to manage such a, a community. Yeah. yeah, but it's also, of course, this is a struggle, but you shouldn't see that as an external community. It's just a part of your company. And if you look into it like that and you are always transparent, you are always sharing all your information with, the, with all these stakeholders, um, it makes much more uh, sense and it makes much, it, managing the, uh, of it makes it much more easier to do. And of course, if you see it as an external group of people giving you some money or buying your product uh, in advance, um, then it's extra hurdle and it's taking extra, t cost you extra time to, yeah. uh, to manage it. But uh, in fact, you should uh, embrace it really. And of course, that is a different mindset. And as an entrepreneur, of course, you are working on a lot of different activities. And if you're on a startup or you're an established business, you have a lot of challenges. 
Uh, and some people are really good in managing a community. Some of them are doing that automatically. Some of them, of course, it's, it's quite difficult for them uh, to do that. So you need also new capacities there for and, new people. And, and, and this is also just really, really a good opportunity for business to consumer uh, 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 organizations, because I, I think uh, with business business, it's, 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 it's harder or not. Um, it, it, it is harder, but it's also, you can still use it. Uh, the, the, the power of the of crowdfunding, crowd innovation, crowdsourcing, of course, it's always about the people. So business to business, if you only see it as a, a company to a company, uh, that's not that powerful. But if you see, okay, what are the people inside the company uh, giving the money or get, receiving the money and involve them, then it can be very powerful. Uh, so it's kind of a network economy. You have all kind of small startups, small companies. Uh, they are working together. They are helping each other. Sometimes with funding, sometimes with a network. A network. Um, that's how you can use the crowd. The uh, also in uh, business to business funding. But indeed, that's uh, a totally different story. Yeah, yeah. and also because uh, I, I also did some crowdfunding campaigns and I really realized that, or, or experienced that, uh, for organizations, for organization, it's, it's really hard to invest in crowdfunding because they have no idea how to manage that in their administration. Uh, they, uh, and, and in my case, it, 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 it was only about 500 or 1,000 euros, not big numbers, but they really had trouble with. Uh, with doing that, you also give the example of, of Waka Waka Lights, mm -hmm. and um, what you said. Okay, uh, they did. Uh, they are continually busy with crowdfunding. So they started first with. Uh, why? <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Your perhaps, story. Yeah, perhaps <laughs> I can explain it. Is that what I did? Is that uh, they did serial crowdfunding. So the whole concept of serial crowdfunding is not really established yet. So you see now that a lot of companies that are using crowdfunding that you're doing it one time. Perhaps even do it a second time, but that's already an, uh, not a lot of people do, uh, are doing that. And if they are doing that, they are mostly doing it as, uh, in the same type of campaign. You're doing serial crowdfunding in different stages of your organization. As a startup, perhaps you need some seed funding. So you do a small or a large equity campaign. So what Waka Waka did, they did an equity campaign, uh, sold 2.5% of their equity stake for 75,000 euros. Um, started their first development, created the first prototype, and then they went to uh, a reward-based crowdfunding campaign uh, for their first product, second for the second product, and now uh, when they, after a few years, now an established business, they just want to have some working capital, and they just went to a lend uh, lending platform and got half a million euro uh, as a loan. But that, I think that also makes the, the whole crowd management uh, process even more complex because the motivation of why people invest uh, is, is, is then on every stage uh, is different. Yep. And also what I experienced because I also was one of the, of the investors at Waka Waka at the first equity campaign on Simbit. Mm -hmm. And yeah these, yeah, these investors, they want to know, okay, when, uh, uh, how can I sell my shares? Uh, when uh, we uh, also share some revenue with us, yeah. and I really see that they are struggling about okay, or struggling that 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 just not really good responding on that about okay, but how do we do that? So I think that's a, that's a really extra challenge in in, in managing the crowds uh, yeah. when they are investing from different uh, motivations. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that, that's true, and of course uh, that's a big challenge for them, and also because these are yeah, well, like you said, they have different expectations. Um, and it's not that they are doing everything perfect. Of course, they also have to learn and have to see how they, they now uh, activated the crowd in the first phase and they were interested and they're invested. But how are they keep them motivated and keep them uh, a positive ambassador, of course. And that's, that's a big challenge. And that's something that for the next five to 10 years, that's for the whole, uh, this whole industry. And for, uh, it's a big challenge how to manage that. Yeah, and, 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 and going uh, back to Europe, or going front to Europe, uh, you're also uh, busy with, uh, with the European crowdfunding market. And because now, uh, because uh, crowdfunding platforms are platforms and they want to scale, but mm -hmm. it's quite hard for them to scale because every country has its other legislation, especially when you go to lending and equity. Yeah. Uh, in what way is, is, is Europe busy with fixing that? Um. Europe is busy, it is working on that. You have the, the, the MIFID uh, regulations that's going to be, t the MIFID 2 will have implemented some uh, general ways of doing crowdfunding. 
uh, some of the first crowdfunding, crowdfunding platforms have a first method license already. And in fact, that means that if you are accredited in your own country, you, ha you can do, for example, equity crowdfunding in one country and you have a MIFID license. You only have to notify all the different other regulators in, your, in the other countries where you want to start. Uh, and if they don't respond within, I think, four or six weeks, you are allowed to launch your equity crowdfunding platform in that country. Okay, that's, and a, that, that's a really good condition. Yeah, that's a good yeah. condition. So yeah. they, they yeah. have to act. Yeah. Uh, if they don't act, uh, or, or if they uh, have some additional uh, questions or uh, some extra regulations, like for example in Belgium, if you want to do there, you have to need, need to have your uh, documentation in France also. Um, so then th these, these are some, some extra steps you have to do, but still then the basic the groundwork is done. So you don't have to start over again from, uh, in, with every regulator. So with, with MIFID, that makes it already a bit easier. Yeah, so, so, that, so that's the first step to really a European crowdfunding market that also can compete uh, to other continents like uh, the US. Yeah, totally. And, uh, and then, of course, there are still a lot of challenges uh, like tax issues. Uh, how do you work with uh, taxations uh, among borders? Uh, uh, how does it work if anything goes wrong? Who's responsible for that? If you are German, investing through a French platform in a Spanish project. How does that work? Uh, who's liable there? So these are questions not being solved yet because it's, uh, these cases are not happening yet, especially because uh, all these investing platforms are mostly focusing only in one country. Yeah. Uh, but it will happen much more and um, that will take even longer before that is uh, European uh, regulations and I guess that will not happen at all. But mm -hmm. then we still have to figure out how to work with that yeah. Uh, because it will happen much more uh, and much more often. Yeah, and the, it's the same uh, what you'll see in the Netherlands, uh, the platforms are expanding to other countries. Uh, one platform crowd that goes to Germany, Simit is, is also, I guess, uh, in, in Italy. Geld for car, money for each other, is just bought by a Swedish uh, company that also has platforms in other countries. So yeah. it's, they, are, they are already uh, expanding, but they are not using that power to create one one platform, there's still, I guess, different entities. Yeah, and I think that's also one of the main success factors if you want to do that. If you are going to launch one European platform, nobody feels connected there anymore. Because uh, one of the things I also discussed here in this uh, presentation, uh, here at Crowd Dialog, is that I said it's not about the technology, it's about the people, soft skills. So if you are going to launch your crowdfunding campaign as an entrepreneur, you want to have a local presence. So you want to know you, uh, people that help you with your campaign. This, they, they need to be local. Yep. If you are in Holland, if you want to launch a crowdfunding campaign, you want to have it on a Dutch platform because your investors, they like to read it in Dutch. Yeah, they like to use the local payment systems. And also with Dutch uh, 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 payment systems. I think that's just uh, like with Indiegogo and Kickstarter, still the biggest struggle. Uh, many people in the Netherlands, they don't have credit cards. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's still, uh, still a problem. But there are uh, quite some challenges uh, ahead. But, and uh, you, uh, you're also uh, the founder of the Crowdfunding Hub. It, mm -hmm. it's, it started uh, as a physical hub in Amsterdam in the Burst uh, van Berlage, a really great old building uh, <laughs> just near the central station. Yeah. Um, what's going on with that? Yeah, the Crowdfunding Hub is really a, a European network of crowdfunding experts. So we connect all these local hubs. They are in, the, in all these different countries. They are all hubs of crowdfunding experts. They can be law experts. They can be uh, financial experts, campaigning cam uh, experts. And we identify them and we connect them with each other. So like in the Netherlands, we have a group of people dedicated to uh, educate about crowdfunding, crowdfunding advisors. Um, and we reach out to all the different other countries and to con connect them in one European ne network. And the reason for that is that there's a lot of uh, uh, information still that it needs to be shared. We need to learn a lot from each other. Still quite a nascent industry. We have to grow this industry and the only way to do it is to help each other and to share the knowledge. So what we do is create that network and on top of that network we organize events, activities, uh, we do research, pan-European research because we have in all the uh, member states we have people uh, that know about crowdfunding from a legal perspective, from a tax perspective, uh, but also from a campaigning uh, perspective. And how are you managing this crowd yourself? Because I think it's just the, the, the same challenge uh, like when you just finish your crowdfunding campaign. 
yeah, it's uh, um, that's also the ch a challenge, of course. But uh, the main re uh, it's not that I am managing that crowd. It's a crowd. Uh, it's a it's a network of uh, of experts, and everybody can use that network. So it's not that it's that I have to uh, control that uh, that network. No, but so, you have to facilitate them and, and also yeah. try to keep the energy yeah. alive. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the, what I do, therefore, is I, we have the, those hubs. So all these hubs are a few people that are really passionate about it, and they are really the the, the forerunners in their own country. They know all the they have all the connections. They know how to reach out to all the platforms, to all the regulators, to all the business angels, to all these uh, accelerators and incubator networks. And they will enable it, and it will give them also uh, uh, a position in their own country because then they are the central location for all crowdfunding activities in their country. So that's that's what the main focus is of the crowdfunding hub. We really focus on that professional financial advisory uh, industry. So you have these financial advisors. Normally, they are uh, entrepreneurs are going to them, ask them uh, that they are lo looking for funding. In the beginning, normally up until five to ten years ago, it just sent them straight to a bank. And now they have to work in a different industry where there is a lot of different opportunities there. You have crowdfunding with equity, you have peer-to-peer -peer lending, you have factoring, uh, so credit unions. You have a lot of different options you can use as, a, as an entrepreneur and you need to have professionals helping you with that. Yeah, but I think that then also education is very important, not only of the, of the, of the professionals, but also of the crowds, uh, because for them it's 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 even more new than I think for the professionals. So, in what way yeah. are you busy with those kind of education for the, uh, for your network, but also to to work together with uh, uh, countries to yeah uh, to also ed educate the crowds. Uh, yeah, on different levels. One of them is that uh, if you are going into education for these professionals, um, you need to uh, formally license that. So you need to make sure that the, the local regulators uh, uh, confirm that, this is, that, that you are uh, licensed as a finance professional. Uh, so what we do is we work together in other countries with these professional organizations. Um, because they already license these uh, financial professionals, either as accountants or uh, people working in a bank. Uh, they do their training already, it's mandatory for them, so we add there the crowdfunding knowledge and uh, make sure that it's also including, included in that certification. So that's one way of doing that. And if you do it like that, then you have the, the buy-in of the whole financial industry already. And that way, it is for an entrepreneur much more interesting to approach an advisor that has that certification because they know, okay, they have that knowledge. And it's also for, for example, for platforms, it's uh, much easier to work together with such a professional because they know they have the basic knowledge and it makes it much easier for them to put a project on, uh, on their platforms. Yeah, uh, so, so, so it, then it, 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 it will raise the industry standards of, of, of the experts and then yeah, I think it's, it's a very interesting approach. Yeah, and, and, and we work there also together, uh, of course, with all the associations, uh, some of the European or, or local associations for the accountancy industry, for example, uh, to implement that. Because they, ha they know, at this moment, they know that they don't know anything about crowdfunding. So that's a big step already. It's a start. Yeah, uh, it's a start, yeah. <laughs> uh, and they know also that their members need to change the business model. They are, normally they were focused on creating their yearly reports and uh, doing bookkeeping and that's it. And that is changing. Everything is going online. So all these uh, accountants need to change and need to go into advising. Um, and the biggest thing they need to advise on is finding uh, investments, finding finance. So they need to find out, uh, they need to have the knowledge. And so these associations know, okay, we need to focus on education for our members. So that's the way how we know, how we can get all that certification uh, yeah, to, to, to all the countries. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's a good, uh, that's quite a big market uh, to, 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 to start with. Yeah, but yeah. Don't, don't you also then have the, 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 the threat of focusing too much on the financial part of crowdfunding and, uh, uh, and not on the crowd part? Uh, so are you also going to uh, make uh, uh, courses for community managers uh, so they can learn how to 
uh, yeah, manage or manage uh, facilitate a, a, a crowd community. Yeah. Um, you should see it like uh, you have different levels of certification and there are some basic levels that are always the same, like how to manage your community, for example, or how to start up your crowdfunding campaign. Uh, what are the basics uh, where you should focus on? So these can be all the same, this can be also the same uh, in all the countries in, uh, in Europe. Uh, and especially the financial part, that is something that is really specific in every country. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Sounds very interesting. And, and 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 what are your, because you're busy with quite some some some, some things I I hear. <laughs> uh, what are your uh, uh, steps? Uh, let's say the uh, the next year. So so uh, uh, what milestones do you have for yourself? Yeah. So for um, for example for the for the crowdfunding hub, the main milestones is that we are building up this network in Europe. Uh, up until in March 2016, we have a big event in the Netherlands where we are going to invite all these uh, networks from, uh, from Europe uh, to come together, uh, to meet each other in person, because that's really important. We, have, uh, we are building now the, the, the online network already, but you need to meet people in, uh, in person. Uh, events like Crowd Dialogue are really good for that, uh, and so we take that uh, to the next level. Um, then we also, at that moment, we launched some uh, uh, European research activities we've done. One of them is um, focused especially on that uh, training and certification. So how are we going to launch that certification program so that everybody, all the stakeholders are involved in there, they are supporting that, and they are going to use it and they're going to implement it. And we give that like an open uh, project to all the other members, to all the other stakeholders. So they can implement it in all their countries themselves. Uh, so that are the main goals uh, we, we have up until March 2016. Okay, so that's uh, quite <laughs> some work to do. Yeah. So thanks for the interview. I, 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 I suggest that we do the interview again uh, in, in, a, in a year. Yeah, sure. No we'll idea where we will meet then. <laughs> Maybe just really in boring the Netherlands, uh, mm, no idea. No, somewhere <laughs> in a nice spot, yes. Okay, so let's have a beer and thank you. Okay, thank you very much.